Hey guys, it's the Aho here, and it is the beginning of the fourth week of July in 2024. A typical uh, summertime start to the day here. It's midday now, and we had some kind of thin overcast this morning. And I don't know, at six o'clock it was 55 degrees, and it's only going to get up to low 70s later today. So we're having some really nice weather around. Hey, today we're going to uh, get into tearing down this uh, RL550B that I got. Um, I, I'll say at the get-go here, I had some difficulties with a few of the clips and I didn't realize it until after I had already finished taking the thing apart and I couldn't put it back together and take it apart again for you. Um, so I'm going to have to stick in a couple of still shots here. I was shooting it off the GoPro and the GoPro was just, uh, it was flashy and it decided to go into slow-mo mode all by itself. And it was, anyway, it was terrible, but we'll get, we'll get through it. I have other clips that I shot with. Uh, my phone that were better um, but we'll uh, we'll talk about what was involved uh, to take this thing apart and it really isn't difficult um, the 550c has a uh, some features on it that make it considerably easier um, and we'll we'll talk about that um, as we go through this but let's go ahead and and get into tearing this thing down um, look at the parts and pieces as they come off and uh, then we'll We'll come back. Here's kind of the general condition of this guy. You, you know, it's dirty, um, but it's not horrible. I'm gonna leave it on the mount that it came on. I've got one bolt kind of holding it in place while I tug and pull. It had no priming system on it. So we'll take care of that. But I'm, and you know, we got little bits of corrosion here and there that that stuff will clean up also at least to good functionality. So the first thing we're gonna do is come in here and get rid of this stuff. Okay, so to get our shell plate and so forth off, there's a set screw in here. I'm gonna take that completely out since I wanna really clean this ram up and see if I can do this without losing it. Okay, there's that. I've got a little tray over here. Now we can take this bolt out. Is it loose? It should be. Yeah. yeah it's a little tight. That set screw is what holds tension on this bolt, and it is. It's either dirty in there, it should be much looser than this. So it's a good thing to get it clean. There's a, a ball bearing and a spring underneath this plate. So I wanna be sure I don't lose that. Let's see if I can do this by hand now, yep. Okay. Okay, so there's that bolt, put that in here. And this is an ejector wire. Let's see if I can get this off here now without losing my detent ball. The ejector wire should just come right out of there, but it's tight also. It comes. And I'm going to get a handy tool. You guys have all, all have these, right? From Mac man. Oh man, that is like really tight in there. It should just fall out of there. So it is kind of grungy. I'll have to take the whole plate off, it looks like. Um, we've got a couple more screws to take out here. So well, the locator pins are still there. That's good. These were number three locator pins. All right, stand by. I'm, there's a couple of screws we got to take out here, and we'll get this off. So there's the detent ball, and it should be loose in there. At least it is on my 
other one. These two guys are notoriously tight, so uh, we're going to go ahead and at least try to get those out. Putting this back on can be troublesome um, in that there's a little bit of wiggle room here, and if the uh, primer seater doesn't line up exactly with this hole, uh, then it won't function. And so there's a special tool that uh, Dylan provides to make sure that when you put this back on that it gets lined up exactly with, um, you know, exactly underneath the uh, die that goes up into that position. Anyway, we'll show you that when it comes time to put it back together, but let's see if I can get these busted loose. All right, those screws turned out to be not very tight at all in there, so we'll bring these guys out. Oh no, man, they're grungy. Sonic cleaner time for some of this stuff. Okay, this should just come off of there now. There it is. All right. Yeah, there's the spring that was up inside there and that ball right in there I don't know if you can see that in there or not it's it's still not wanting to come out I'm gonna poke it through from the other side I think I can push it out okay I was able to push the detent ball out of its hole and all that uh, junk you see kind of came out of there so it was pretty well tightly wedged up in there pardon the noise we got wildfire in the area and bombers are flying on the bottom here, you can see there's a piece that had been broken off of there, and that holds a that's a bracket that holds uh, a roller for the op rod that uh, operates the um, priming system. So here's that piece on the 550C that was missing. Okay, there's the roller that you need to have for the op rod. Looks like somebody got in there and forcibly broke that off, maybe because they didn't know how to get underneath there. But anyway, uh, I'm going to pull these two screws and take those bits off. And kind of over here, you can see how gungy and cruddy that is down in there, too. And you need to get that ram out of there and get it cleaned up. Okay, so we got the shell plate and the shell plate platform and all their associated screws and parts off. Uh, the next thing is to start uh, getting the linkage taken off. And I'm going to take the handle off first I think I don't know can I get in there with this up there let's see oh yeah it's not very tight that big seven eighths wrench okay you don't need to watch me screw around I'll get that off stand by all right got the handle off the hole there is threaded so you got to kind of spin the handle off and you can see we got a little a couple little rust spots in here but it's not bad um i'll put the washer and nut back on there just so that we don't lose those and we'll set that aside now we'll go to work on these linkages okay i want to get this pin out the one on my newer press is bolted on or excuse me got a, it was threaded yeah got a nut on each side but this one's got eclipse and there's a couple of spring washers in here i want to make sure i don't lose those all right so i got a couple of punches i got a delrin punch and a brass punch Let's see how easy those are going to be i got a feeling they're not going to be fun and these Linkage pins are one of the biggest differences between the 550B and the 550C. So not only is this, uh, the ends of these threaded so that we can uh, just take the nuts off and pull that pin out, but there's also a grease fitting here, a zerk fitting, and then there's a weep hole there so that as you push new grease in, the old stuff comes out here. So that's a, a huge improvement. And we have a kind of a similar thing going on up here with the top linkage bolts. Again, those are 
um, nuts that are on there and you can take both of those out and these have a pinhole um, grease fitting needle hole I guess what we call it anyway and again weep holes here on each side so those are considerably easier to get out we just unscrew them and then you can kind of push them out from the outside if they won't pull directly out all right we got those eclips popped off of there and we'll try this delrin punch first Pretty tight. Wonder if it'll go better the other way. Stand by. All right, that that pin's being recalcitrant, so we're going to take a different tack. I'm going to go ahead and take this off the mount and take this pin out and pull the and uh, pull the ram. There's a set screw down in there. I got to get that out, and then we can knock knock this pin out. We'll get that part of the linkage loose, and then I think this stuff will come out a little easier. I hope. Anyway, a little bit of rust there that needs taken care of too, don't we? All right, let me get this off the press or off the stand. Okay, so that set screw there has to come out. That rides in kind of a race in that pin that keeps it from moving out of there. So let me get that out, and we'll see how easy this pin's going to come. Okay, there's that set screw it came out of there. It's pretty gungy. We'll make sure we save that. Okay, with the set screw out of there and uh, the linkage kind of propped up here on some wood, let's see if this will tap out of there. Okay. Yeah, it seems to want to come right out. Pretty easy. Good, there we go. And you can kind of see that race there where that set screw rides to keep that pin from sliding back and forth okay and it's gungy and lubricant is almost non-existent on there so now the ram should just come right out of there let's see yep here we go well you know what i'm going to get something to set that on get some paper toweling down here for that guy all right, and there's our ram. Kind of wrap that guy up. Keep it protected. Now we'll go to work on this linkage here. All right, yeah, it's gonna come easy now. I need to more block, block that a little bit more. Let's see, what do we got around here? Let's try this. If that gets me up high enough. Yep. That was better. And my spring washers. Let's not lose those. And I'm, I'm bagging this guy, you know, all our parts up kind of by category here, guys. So we don't lose anything that goes together. Okay, now we got to get these uh, toggles off of here. So these link arm pins have to be driven out. Um, and you got to have a, a punch. I didn't have a long enough brass punch. I've since ordered one. So I had to use a steel punch. And in order to get them out, you have to come over to the other side. And this one over here is hollow so you can get your punch through there knock the opposing one out and this of course is after the ram has been removed okay then once this pin is out you can come in from this side and punch the other one out okay so that's a little tricky and you can see right there on the edge the end of this the last three-eighths of an inch or so is knurled see that and so it is a really tight fit in there and putting them back in it's just about as hard as getting them out um, but it can be done you just have to prop everything up and uh, 
you know, be careful with it so that you don't mess up the edges of the pins or the inside of the frame. You can upgrade to the newer style threaded um, pins that have the needle grease hole in them, but to do that, um, you have to replace the uh, press body. Uh, Dylan offers a kit for that. They give you the whole new press body. You keep all of the other parts, but they give you the press body, the new pins, and the alignment tool that you need to get your um, shell plate platform properly aligned. That comes in a kit, but it's pretty expensive. Okay, I think you can see down in there, it's pretty grimy and gritty. Definitely needs to be cleaned up. And this won't fit in my Sonic cleaner either, so I'm gonna have to do all that by hand, but that's all right. We'll get it in a bucket and get in there and scrub it up really well. Some TLC and we should be good to go. So here's all our parts then. You know, we got the press body, we got the linkage arms, we got the bottom toggle there. There's all our linkage bolts and we got the shell plate platform and its associated parts. And then the shell plate and its associated parts all bagged up so we don't lose any of that stuff. There's that funky primer catcher. All right, let the cleaning begin. Okay, so there it is, all, all, all taken apart down to the frame. Um, the only thing that we uh, did not take out was the um, return spring for the primer slide. And you can take that out. It's a roll pin that holds it in there, but there's no particular good reason for taking that thing out and, and sticking it back in. Um, it, the one that was on here is still on there. It wasn't dirty, wasn't messed up or anything. So there was no, no good reason to take that one out. Um, so I didn't, I just left it in for the cleaning process and it was fine. And this is uh, not a difficult project, guys. You shouldn't be afraid to tackle this yourself if, if uh, need be, you know, if you want to get yours cleaned up and, and lubed and whatnot. Um, they're not all that many parts. You don't need a whole lot in the way of, of tools. You need a good set of Allen keys. Um, you need a 7 8 uh, wrench to get this uh, handle bolt off or nut off of there. And that's, you know, if you got a good adjustable end wrench, you can do that. Um, I would recommend that you get yourself a, a brass drift punch to drive these pins out. I had to use a steel one and, you know, since then I, I picked up a, a suitable brass punch. But the hole in that other side over here is uh, 5 sixteenths and you need one with a shaft that's about six inches to get, you know, that pin drifted all the way out. Um, so, and, and you know, the handle portion can't be longer or bigger in diameter than five sixteenths either. But that that's it, you know, if you're gonna tear one apart, that might be the only thing you'd have to go locate, um, but not hard at all. So what we'll do next time then is go through the cleaning process. Uh, I use my Sonic cleaner, I use a, a product that um, I just recently got a hold of that worked real well. We'll tell you about that next time and show you what we had to do to get everything, you know, kind of cleaned up and ready to reassemble. All right. Um, I think that'll do it. So from the Viejo bench for now, that's all she wrote. <laughs>